Sejuani is still up and available if they want to pair that alongside them. I want to actually see this rel on Crisp. I feel like Crisp has been an excellent rel ever since the champion came back into the meta. It also just provides so much of that engage that was missing for Weibo last game as well. Uh, there is still a double pick coming over for Top Esports, and I think they did find a lot of strength in the momentum they were able to grab with their composition last time. Maybe a little bit more safety coming out in game number two. We had said Top Esports, at least in the postseason, has not been able to find a win on that blues on that red side. Rather, it is the Zaya that will provide that safety we were talking about for Jackie Love. Top Esports could look for something like the Azir paired alongside the Zaya, a very common trend that we see with compositions where you have great disengage and with the Rel getting locked in, it's very clear to say that Weibo Gaming, they want to go for something very aggressive in this game too. So potentially something like that Jace, which is still up and available. The Sejuani does end up coming through for TN, so some strength and engage there for Top Esports, but also some skirmishing power early in the pathing of TN in one of our biggest brains in the LPL. There is on the other side for Weibo, though, the lock-in of the Azir for the Emperor of Spring, at least, in Xiaohu, trying to make it come through with this Azir, and it's been a pivotal pick for both mid laners. Yeah, and Xiaohu had an excellent showing on the Azir throughout the playoffs. Many team fights were won because of that Shireen with Shuffle and hitting five-man ultimate. So we talked about how Xiaohu, he's the general for Weibo Gaming. He's the one that makes fights happen. So let's see that for this game too. But something that will be an ongoing trend for this entire series is that Light most likely won't be prioritizing the Zai. He hasn't played a single Zai game into the summer split, continuing into the regional qualifiers on this elimination match. And he is going to default to the Zeri, which is his most played. Yeah, he, he goes back to that one just to provide a little bit of safety, but also has safety of his own, right, and some stability there. There is still some big power picks left on the table as well. We haven't gotten our top lane matchup. I'm actually really excited that we're saving that for the second phase, see what kind of bands come out towards that one. But now that we have the Azir mid lane, the answer has to come through here for Rookie, and it is the Jace. Top Esports this time around, they still have that counter pick save for the top lane or potentially support, but we do know that Mark, I mean, most likely going to pick something like the Nautilus that can lock down the Zeri so easily. But when Wayward's Cassante is banned, man is either your angel or your devil, right? And we saw him <laughs> having an excellent game on that Cassante in game one, of course. So potentially a consideration of the Nar where he has so much priority on that champion. And this is where I do wonder if Weibo actually banned away the Nautilus, because that was like the tried and true pick in to the Zeri every time we saw Zeri every single game <laughs> when she was so big in the meta. Uh, but we actually get the Braum there from that game number one, banned away by Top Esports. Something else that Wayward can also consider for this top lane is an Orn. If you consider the fact that you're versing the Azir, Orn is a great champion that will put the Azir out of position, and you also deny that away. Or at least, oh, would you deny it away if they pick it on four? I guess they do, to protect people like Rookie and Jackie Love, who will need to force either a flash or an ultimate just to get away from Orn. <laughs> Crisp, uh, not going to want to go against the Rakan matchup in the bot side. We'll ban that one away from Mark, but now it is seeing if we get that continued focus. The Renekton actually from game one by Top Esports. Don't want to give that one over to the Shy. Something that's really scaring me is that Tristana, hello? Still no, there. No Tristana, I guess, for this game too, as it does get let through open, but we have mid laners and ADCs both locked in for these teams. So it's going to be about the top lane matchup. And once again, I mean, the shy on the Renekton from that game one, not too much of a showing when you are a very dominant early champion. So potentially they look for a different team identity where you already have the Azir and the Zeri. Playing for that late game 5v5 is going to be the way for them to bring the series back. The Jax ban as our final one for this second game. It is the Nautilus there for Mark. I mean, it is just going to be naturally good lockdown for someone like the Zeri and, of course, the Azir. And you also have a lot of preference towards the Nautilus when you do go up against a potential rel support on the side of Weibo Gaming. But now the Shy has to blind his top lane matchup, where you still have champions like, I believe, the Orn. I just keep talking about Orn. We're going to blind Quinn like Hysterix wants. <laughs> We're not getting a Quinn. The, get the Rumble gets locked, locked in. in. Okay. Well, the Shy did play one single Rumble game into summer playoffs. I'm not going to say it did too well because it did not do yeah. well because he was very aggressive. But that's exactly what you need out of a Rumble, being very aggressive and mean in that early game where you get leads. 
So we do get that change up from that game one draft. No mistakes necessarily being laid out in front of them. They have the engage. They have a big wombo combo for Weibo Gaming. And Top Esports with their response of the counter pick here will need to find something to maybe match that a little bit. Ooh, I like the cannon into the rumble. Although it's still a 50-50 matchup, the cannon should be able to play with the range that he has through the orders to get slight trade advantages in the early game. But still, it's going to be about how the jungle pressures towards this very vulnerable vulnerable matchup in the Kennen and the Rumble. But on the side of Weibo Gaming, they have huge AoE coming into this game too. They have Leona that acts very similar to an Orn where you throw that ultimate onto either Jackie Love or Rookie having to burn summoner spells or either ultimates to dodge that one out. While on the other side, Top Esports, they have champions with range. They have Jace that will get online at that three item spike. And Weibo Gaming, they don't really have anything that can deal with this. We'll have to wait and see because I feel like coming into this game too, Top Esports we're headed on to the rift and we're headed into some wonderful dios as we're going straight into the arena straight on to summoner's rift As the crowd quiets down a little bit, man, every time it does not get old. The amount of energy in this arena is incredible. But we are looking at a bit of a different take here in game number two. We are seeing, though, the main prevalence is going to be about early pathing for both Weiwei and Tien and the proactivity that Tien can have on top esports. Yeah, Top Esports getting the Jace two games in a row as well, right? Where Rookie really was the defining factor in those team fights, getting the two items online. This champion is such a dominating, I guess, carry in the current meta where 80 champions are the meta right now. But still, coming into this game too, we have comfort in the hands of Jackie Love where he has a defensive tool, so he won't be too much of a worry compared to the fact that Wibble Gaming, they have the Leona, they have the Rel that need to engage onto the carries. But if Jackie Love already has the cleanse and Flash, of course, the Feather Storm available. They can realistically only look for Rookie in these team fights. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of safety. Uh, I feel like on both sides, actually, a lot of that engage is going to help Weibo to peel back a lot of uh, situations like that. But we do see both junglers actually starting towards bottom side. It's going to be expected that both junglers will be making their way slowly towards the top side, but the engage from the bottom lane. This has been now at this point the bread and butter of this series, just early level one trades between the two V2s and bottom side, but both teams looking for blood and just trying to keep this pressure on early on in this second game. Weiwei has two very obvious decisions to make either go towards bottom lane use that flash burn the summoners out of jackie love and get revenge for life we're getting tower dove from that <laughs> game one or potentially look for something in the mid lane where rookie without the flash on the jace is extremely vulnerable and that's exactly how you shut down a champion like jace from the early game it is curious to me though because we did get the in game number one at least full focus down towards bottom lane even though we didn't really get anything early on it was both junglers hovering there this time around it is going to be centered around this top lane matchup and a key matchup in its own that we highlighted so much much before coming into the series. Now Weiwei knows that someone is on their blue buff, and I guess the blue buff is just gone. Tian has the smite available as well. Does he get to get this? He's gonna get 50 -50? it. There. Oh, he doesn't get it. I believe it's under the Poro skin there, and Tian ends up coming away with the buff. Surprising fact is that how does Sejuani clear faster than Rel? The reason why pe most people prefer to have the Rel over the Sejuani is that you have a much faster clear time with the changes given to this champion, but now Weiwei's angry. Coming back for some chicky nuggies, Tien will end up getting a big one. Maybe a little bit given over to Weiwei, but that is the kind of skirmishing that I love to see between these two junglers. They are pivotal in facilitating the rest of the team, and especially with the kind of compositional strengths that we already laid out. Light, though, in a little bit of trouble. That lockdown's starting to weigh pretty heavy down there. The ignite burning as well, those feathers tick it in. Light's going to need to be very careful down here as Crisp is on his way back down. Light, you had no right to be trying to freeze that way right in front of Mark as well as Crisp did go for a cheetah recall to get that refillable pop, but now your ADC loses out on an entire wave, so That's that was so rough. really not worth and they're still going at it. We could check in a couple years from now, and I'm sure Weiwei and Tian will still be fighting. Uh, Xiaohu, with that priority in mid lane, though, will be able to help him. Weiwei gets out a lot. 
Wait, wait, did also secure the red buff away from Tien. I mean, these junglers <laughs> are just, just exchanging trading. buffs, but we have Tien in the top lane first. The shot okay. is so overextended. He is. He's in a lot of trouble here. He does have the flash. Tien just trying to find the angle. Doesn't hit the Arctic Assault. Some alcove gameplay from the Shy. We'll be able to get some damage back with that Flame Spitter. Able to weigh down the engage of Tien and Wayward. Now Weiwei on the back end of this one was hoping that Tian would play greedy and go for a little bit of renewed jungle clear. Both junglers going to end up backing so close as Weiwei actually ends up stopping his back, realizing there could be something. Wayward didn't expect this to come through, and Weiwei ends up getting an engage here, but he has no follow-up. Wayward did end up burning the flash. And the nullifying orb as well. Wayward needs the TP back to catch this wave, slowly building under his tower. But without the flash available, this upcoming dragon fight won't be considered by the side of top esports. But still, we see how much priority that both junglers are showing towards the top side. And I like the crowd in the arena today. The shy sidestepped the Sejuani <laughs> W, and the crowd went absolutely insane. But that is great discipline coming out of the shy. He is noting that this is a very vulnerable matchup. That's the thing about this series, though. You could literally take a dart and throw it anywhere besides maybe one place in Weiwei's continue, to be continued story, and you will find greatness. You will find legacy that has been built and that is trying to be rebuilt, and the Shy himself, no slouch in that regard. And we do actually see Weiwei going for the Scuttlecrab. Dragon is available on the bottom side, and do wonder if Top Esports want to try to take priority with that, as they're going to find a 3v2 bottom side. Tien doesn't have that Glacial Prison just yet, but Crisp has to end up flashing. Because he does have pots running, but he's so low. So top esports, they're gonna regain control towards his dragon and potentially pick that up for themselves as the Rift Trail is still two minutes away. So there's no pressure on the other side of the map other than Wayward having to burn his flash. But still, top esports, they need a way for these ultimates to come online, especially in the cannon, right? Because if you consider the fact that Wayward Gaming, they did give over this first dragon. Oh, good flash from Rookie there. Xiaohu just trying to catch him out into Weiwei. But now we see actually the skirmish coming down. Who's gonna get the dragon? It's gonna be chaos and it's actually gonna be Wei Wei that steals it away. Also, first blood ends up going over and it goes straight into Life's pocket. One responded to though, and Jackie Love gets caught. The Ultra Shock laser ends up a double kill for Light. And Weibo Gaming, they come back punching the Shy now walking towards that mid lane. Rookie doesn't have the flash. Chen is so low Equalizer. as well. He wants to look for it. He's looking for the long distance potentially. Will end up just making a little bit of crispy chicken nuggies there for himself. And it is top esports that get responded to with their early plays. And Light picks up two kills on the Zeri, previously missing out an entire wave because of how terribly the lane was going. But the Shrima shuffle used by Xiaohu to start everything off, right? But Tian and Mark, they took so much damage from the Dragon as well, and forcing everyone into the pit. Weiwei took it away with that 50-50 smite as well, and no one was focusing on the carries as Jackie Love was forced to flash out of the wall as well. Yeah, there wasn't really much after that, and Weiwei ended up flashing over, perfectly connecting to make sure the Ultra Shock laser lands in that. That lead for Light is going to pay dividends. That is something we didn't see in game number one, playing around this guy. And now we have the resources in the right direction for Weibo. Now Weiwei is level six, working towards that Rift Trail, which will be spawning in around 30 seconds. The link up between jungle and support is going to be key for this game. Both of them have great engages. Now Crisp having a champion like the Leona, where it provides great setup, something we didn't see in game one. But Weibo Gaming, they always excelled through jungle and support synergy and vision control mainly, especially when you need setup for either Weiwei or Xiaohu to go for those flanks. Yeah, I mean, Chris isn't so good in his track record. I feel like recently it has been a little bit more murky water for him. He hasn't been that standout support for Weibo, but in his past, in his world championship run with FBX, with Tien on the other side, it has been a, a little bit of a track record of Chris being very mobile on the map. And now we see Weibo going for a little bit of a play here. Tien unsuspecting on the grump, and the engage comes over. He's like, I can't do anything here. And Tien goes down to his former teammate in Crisp. Weiwei is actually one camp away from six. I miss Red, and he stole the Grump and also killed Tien. He is getting bullied around on this Sejuani, but once again, the great link up between Leona and Rel for this game too is really setting the tempo and putting pressure on specifically the bottom lane of top esports. And that's what I want to talk a lot about a little bit more, because we were talking about all the engage and the peelability for Weibo, but the strength comes through light, comes through Xiaohu. That's going to be the main carry forces for them. However, Weibo Gaming having, like you said, the Zeri and the Azir, the damage isn't going to be full-on burst. They have to play these teamfights very slow unless 
equalizer lands onto five men, and then you just start collecting the kills as the Zeri, I suppose. But on the side of top esports, once again, it's going to be how the solo lane is really show up to the team fight. Tian's gonna go for a little bit of finickiness himself. He said, you know, you guys can be sneaky, but I can be sneaky as well. They're just gonna hover this crash in here, maybe try to get some gold for Jaguar. They're just going in. This is a what? 3v3. Top Esports a little bit zealous. Mark with the Spider-Man jump, but he goes down to Weiwei anyways. Jackie Love under tower dies too. And Top Esports is nightmare of not winning on red sides coming to bite them. Guys, what are we forcing? A huge wave, but still Mark flashing in, trying to ult onto Light, but Light only needing to use the ultimate and top esports, they completely shoot themselves in their own foot. Well, Light's looking a lot like Jackie Love last game, getting paid as hell here early on, and this early lead will pay dividends to Weibo as well. The equalizer gonna be used on the way. We're in the top side, just try to get some of these plates down to the shy. But the strength on the map is already present for Weibo. Does seem like the early game is going to become a huge snowballing point for the side of Weibo Gaming to take, but the shy he does have the flash available. His old teammate ganking him, Mazel. Oh goodness, we'll see if he can get out. Hey, he got out of the last one. He's got Weiwei right behind him. He's gonna buy time with the Alco gameplay here, and the shy is masterfully setting this up. That's the slicing maelstrom, though. He gets locked down. He's gonna flash though. He is buying so much time here, but he gets shot down in the back by Wayward. Wayward should go down to Weiwei though now as he goes forward, does end up getting the charge. Tien's here on the back end though and rookie can respond getting rookie kills is so monumental for top esports but Weiwei slides his way out like a smooth criminal and Chris is able to body block here I don't think they can get Weiwei and he makes it out alive a one for one trade between oh, the two top lane Shao Shao is here he's here to try to get the difference maker Shreema shuffle can be the difference it's Tian tanking it up rookie goes right back in Marcus here with the engage Tian is still alive but he dies to Shaohu and now it's back right around again Shao Who's alive? A triple kill for the Emperor of Weibo Gaming, and now they're gonna work towards the Rift Turtles and a 9 to 2 scoreline to start off this game, too. I don't think I had my seatbelt on tight enough here, Kitty. My god, these games are snowballs from hell so far. Two games in a row, both teams are just gunning it. We actually see Weibo end up taking this Rift Herald as well off the back of that one. This game truly feels like a race of momentum. We we see in this replay that the Shy once again getting ganked by Rookie as Wayward flashing away from Weiwei and then getting that ultimate onto the laners of Weibo Gaming. But still, they committed so much into killing the Shy. Everyone else was extremely low in either health or mana. And this is a bit of a detail that Xiaohu was engaging onto Mark and he used the Shem uh, I guess Emperor's Divide onto the support so Mark couldn't really come back into the fight but still the moment of this fight was still Xiaohu being able to show up and get that triple kill onto top esports and this is going to put the Azir so far ahead compared to the Jace. It felt like a revolving door at this point. It's like one fight started okay somebody else came in let's see what happens there. Now we look back at the map Rift Herald is spawned in mid lane by Weibo. And I will not shut up about Crisp and Weiwei playing perfectly in this game. Weiwei was seconds away from dying, but Crisp using his own body to block those skill shots. A true moment of greatness, I suppose. But now the static shift getting picked up by Light as well. Huge lane priority going to be through bottom lane. And Jackie Love going to be consistently pushed under his own tower. And we need to throw back to game one. Jackie Love was a huge win condition that Top Esports had to rely on. And the fact that Light and Xiaohu, the guys we had literally set up for the beginning, say these guys will be the mainstays, the showstoppers. Again? The they have 3 0 and 2. The Shy, is this the third time the charm? He ends up going into the alcove yet again. He's trying to get the outplay here. It doesn't look like he built the flail, goes a little bit wide. My God, the Shy is breaking people's ankles left and right. He has the overheat, though. One more auto attack from Wayward. He's shielding up, and there you go. So, third time is truly the charm for Top Esports. But he bought. So much time for Weibo Gaming, and look at where Jackie Love and Mark is backing right now. Tier 2 Tower, an exact replica of Game 1, where Light was the one getting forced out of his own tower. But still, we get a replay of what happened in the bottom side. It was Weiwei trying to get his hands on the Jackie Love, forcing the Flash and the Feather Storm out of this Zaya. Two extremely important escape abilities. Light already had 3-0-2. He would already had that item completed. And now he has three more plates under his belt, about 30 seconds for those to fall down, see if he can get even more there but meanwhile that pressure that mid lane and bot lane has provided for Weibo ends up in a second dragon for them. 
And you see Tian specifically helping Wei with, but he is currently 30 CS down and also building some MR. So his entire item spike is going to be extremely delayed with the Proto Belt getting pushed back compared to someone like the Shy who has been receiving a lot of attention. Let's just say, say that straight <laughs> up. But he has been buying a lot of time where Weibo Gaming, the other three carries in like Xiaohu and of course Weiwei are extremely ahead. Yeah, I do want to talk a little bit more about Top Esports. They might be down in the dumps right now. Almost 5,000 deficit for them, but they they do still have that range we were talking about in draft. They have that premium engage with Mark and Tian. Do you see them finding a way back in in any sorts? All they need to do is have Mark use that ultimate and lock down Xiaohu. He still doesn't have the flash available, potentially could look for something toward mid lane, but they need to get Jackie Love out, or at least some help for the Zai. You can't just abandon your AD carry, especially when top esports extremely rely on Jackie Love being ahead, especially playing alongside Rookie. So I'm not too sure if top esports, they're very happy with the game save right now, with the Baron spawning, oh, not the Baron, the Rift Child spawning in two minutes. Tian gonna run straight into a metal horse and Xiaohu over the edge too with the Emperor's Divide. That is the combo that you love to see. And Rookie also gets locked down on the back end of the flash too. He gets pulled back and Xiaohu gets a double kill. Jackie Love wants to say something here. He pops the cleanse. There comes the big king gauge for top esports, but Xiaohu gets another one. A triple there. It's not gonna be the quadra. He ends up falling down, but Weibo are wiping the floor with top esports. Double triples for this Azir. He is going absolutely insane. Now 6-1 and one with the Tier 1 tower also falling in the mid lane. Top Esports, they're not going to let you get to that three items for Rookie. Now only just picking up the Dust Blade. But we also saw the double TPs coming out of Top Esports and the Cannon Dive. That was what everyone, or at least Tien, was putting all that resource into and he didn't show up in the team fight. Wasn't able to. We'll take a look back at this replay. How this all started, Tien just face checks it and was on Vision going into it. Crisp and Weiwei are just holding hands with each other this entire game, and Tien is suffering as that Sejuani. Great CC chain coming out of Weiwei, forcing the flash out of Rookie as well. Xiaohu picking up another triple kill. Jackie Love needing to burn everything here as well. The cleanse gone, but the double TPs coming out of the top laners, the cannon did no damage. Yeah, unfortunately, even with that blast code trying to deliver him to Grace, it did not matter. And as we get back into the map here, the state of things for top esports are definitely down in the dumps. It is strong presence from Weibo after a very devastating game number one. And Weibo Gaming, the Azir and the Zeri is only going to get stronger. The weakest point of this Emperor is the first six minutes, or at least the first six levels. And Top Esports, they weren't able to find that advantage. And we talked about how Top Esports, they need to play the fights a little slow. Play through Rookie's poke, and then let Wayward find a flank angle on this cannon to really shut down the side of Weibo Gaming. But it's going to be tough, because Xiaohu has the Emperor's divide. We're looking at mid lane, though. Tian actually taking the preemptive engage. Wayward's over here with the slicing Maelstrom on the Weiwei. Solar Flare comes back in as well. Well, there's the TP from Xiaohu, and that just means top esports need to get out of here. Slicing Maelstrom into the back line. They don't have the damage to follow it up, though. That's the problem. Tian trying to take down Xiaohu, but he gets out with the Shifting Sands. And Weibo with a double kill for this area. It's huge. And the Shy and him fighting Rookie on the end. He wants his old teammate. He gets the solo bolo on his brother. And then he kills his other brother in Jackie Love. A double kill for the top laner of Weibo. An ace. 17 minutes, Mazel. The Baron isn't even up, so they're going to get themselves a Rift Herald for the time being. But the only fallen member on the side of Weibo was the support. So this was an overall huge win as the Shy on this Rumble, who was getting consistently camped and pressured, also got back into the game. He is 50 CS up on Wayward. He's looking at a side tower now as well. And they soaked so much pressure through him in the top side that enabled Weibo. Yeah, and I want all eyes onto Weiwei in this entire team fight because he provided so much setup to allow Light to pop off in this fight in particular, where you also saw Top Esports extremely split up. Rookie wasn't there. The Shy was zoning him out. And of course, Weiwei not having enough damage just quite yet as the cannon, as the Emperor's Divide pushes him out as well. Jackie Love at the end just surrounded completely. He did, and I just love that in the end, the Shy is like, Jackie Love, Rookie, you forgot about me, baby and they are able to turn it around. At the end, Jackie Love also had to burn the flash. I he feel did. like that was unnecessary considering it was a lost fight, but luckily for them, Baron wasn't up, so it wasn't too bad of a loss. It could have been worse. That's all I'm going <laughs> to say. could have been worse. We'll see now as the setup for this dragon comes up for Weibo. It is a third dragon, a dragon soul point for them, and top esports have no say in this game.
no flash, no feather storm. Wayward doesn't even have the setup for this upcoming dragon, so potentially top esports they look for something in the top side. Rookie, you're in some trouble here against the shy. He will absolutely take you down, Rookie. He's got to be a little careful. The shy has the shy the flash. Wants, it. He wants it. He's bloodthirsty, and he takes his head off once again. The Tien, ult. He dodges out of him. Wayward is here though, and Slicey Maelstrom will lock him down. Tien gets revenge for his mid laner. They had to commit so much for the shy. The TP out of Wayward as well. Double ultimates from the top side of top esports, and the bottom side of the map is in shambles. It is absolute devastation here. Over 10,000 gold under 20 minutes, and Xiaohu and the rest of Weibo are looking at an in-hit turret down here in the bot side. Because Wayward had to commit the TP, it's only going to be Jakulov and Mark for the time being as rookies. Still three seconds away. Wayward looking for it. Are we just trying to one-up each other from game number one? There's the Featherstorm, the Blade Call as well. There's the re-engage too, but it's not going to be enough. Light flashes away and Mark needs to be a bit careful. The in-hit does end up going down for Weibo. They should back away. Double items online for the side of Weibo game. You already see how much damage Xiaohu is doing on this Azir. Jackie Love can't even get in range to get those feathers to connect onto the carries. But overall, Light did have to use his double summoners with the Baron spawning in, I guess, right now. It is going to be tough because they have no control whatsoever into checking these bushes because they have so much CC for the side of uh, Weibo Gaming. That's the thing I find so interesting about this series. Yes, we were talking so much about the roller coaster, how the key matchup in the top lane can really affect the rest of the map, but right now, blue side is king. We've seen domination from the blue side, and it's something that top esports know well. They hadn't won a red side game in the playoffs just yet. Devastating stats to hear, but still, Wibble Gaming, they prioritize this Rel as the first pick on the blue side, and it is doing wonders for Weiwei. That's why Top Esports copying two bands specifically towards this player. You see how much of an important role he plays as set up for Weibo Gaming to bounce off. They've got so much gold, they could literally dictate anything they want on the map, and right now they're just hovering around this Baron buff. The only problem is, I feel like, yes, you have the Nashor's Tooth completed, second item as well, Navori Quick Blade for Light. Do they just want to go for it? It looks like that's the case, Kitty. They're going to start it, but Top Esports, I mean, they are going to get baited in. Weibo Gaming can just turn this around with Weibo having the Flash and the Magnus Storm available. Rookie isn't even here. He has TP, but Tian has been under full vision, and there's the Equalizer into the choke point. The Emperor's divided. There's the Wombo combo of your dreams. It wasn't the Baron. It was the kills that were in the eye of Weibo. Oh, look at Tian. He's wrapping around. Weibo Gaming doesn't know that there's a Sejuani behind the Baron the right shy, now. The look Shy, the he's going to look for it. He's going to end up finding he's him finds that him. Arcane Comet there. He is just too good. The spider senses were tingling. Look at the slicey mouser from Wayward. He's going to try to find Xiaohu, but the golden nature of Xiaohu is going to save his day. No, he's taking him out. One more auto what? attack and he gets him. There's the glacial prison that ends up taking him. No, it's Rookie that got the kill in the end. This is chaos and I hope you have your seatbelts ready to go because Light's going over the edge too. Tian ends up separating away from Rookie, but the Shy wants him again. He wants to chase him down. He does get the sidestep, but Light ends up taking down Tian on the back end of it and it's the shy that kills rookie again and again and again and the baron is still going to be started up or considered by Weibo gaming but that was such a drawn out fight i guess tian and wayward they were able to find an op another opportunity to come back into the game as the baron didn't go into the hands of Weibo gaming with Xiaohu getting caught out but they do start at the end they're just gonna start it up yet again uh they feel like a lot of strength with this bf sword for Light, he's sitting at 7-0 and 8. Wayward just having to respond to the double stack super minion wave. Means this Baron buff is easy peasy for Weibo Gaming. Now with the Baron buff recalls, the Dragon spawning in 1 minute and 30 seconds. Top Esports is truly out of options. You see Wayward finding Xiaohu caught out from this play, but I didn't know why Wayward wasn't able to win this because you were up against an Azir that was 1 HP. Just order him, bro! Just order him! Feels bad, man, but Rookie ended up getting that shutdown gold. Actually feels really good. It was after this, though, that the chaos started to ensue, and Weibo knew exactly where they wanted to pull the trigger. Again, I want to see this, man. The Shy has a target on Rookie this game. He is not letting go of this 
I guess, brotherly love from Rookie, oh, but Tian caught out. Tian is completely locked down here, and that Poro ain't going fast enough to get you out of dodge, and that is another kill, meaning Weibo bring their snowball to the doorstep of Top Esports. The minions are swarming in. Azir is also pushing in the top side. Weiwei. Dude, Weiwei on this rel is a different monster, and Weibo waking up after game number one is the same. They are diving under turrets. They are finding everything they could have ever asked for, and blue side dies. Dominance is king. Slicing Maelstrom, though, that's Wayward. Locked down. He doesn't even get a single kill back. A double for Light. And that's the last in hip going down as well. Everyone is so low, though. The oh flash my from God. the shy. Even the flash. Get him out of here. Get us to game three. Weibo have a clean slate. And we have a series on our hands. As one more turret goes down. One more Nexus. And Weibo even us up one to one. 29 kills for Weibo Gaming in this game to dead bodies of top eSports roster everywhere in these team fights. They had a 10,000 gold lead at 18 minutes in the game. It's actually insane. But I will just say, this is kind of what I expected between these two teams. We were talking about the 50-50, the burger flips, the key matchup in the top lane that can be so influential. But the way this has gone down, both teams swinging at each other, and that's why I predicted a five-game series. I can't believe the Shy got ganked four or five times that entire game, and he bought so much time. Although he did end up dying for most of them, he was dodging out in every si single skill shot, and you saw Top Esports getting very desperate because Jackie Love was consistently getting pressured, or at least getting dove by Weiwei on this rel, and I think that's something to consider for the side of Top Esports coming to Game 3, because this rel champion is extremely important in the hands of Weibo Gaming, and it's a great flex that could potentially be considered by Chris as well. That's what I love is the flexibility that they offer as well. And there's that engage potential. That was something I was missing from Weibo in game number one. They find all the engage they could ever ask for. And it comes really well when Crisp is starting to connect with the team a little bit more. Crisp was feeling himself he in was. that game too. That Leona was top lane. He was mid lane. He was also diving Jackie Love on the opposing team. So that's the true win con for Weibo Gaming. The link up between the support and jungle that did bring them such good results from the start of summer, but now they just have to really regain that mojo to pull out in this best of five. And that's what I think has been so curious to me is the fact that, you know, when Weiwei came in, it was a little bit of a differing style, right? It, it felt like a refreshing moment for Weibo, and we see when they connect, it is firing on all cylinders. I cannot wait to get into game number three, but we're going to 